Scotland is a country with a mystical and ghostly past. Tales of bloody clan battles and family curses still resonate within the stones of its ancient castle walls. Ghosts lurking behind secret doors, waiting for just the right moment to reveal themselves, perhaps when we least expect it. These are the stories of Scotland. Supernatural tales of fierce loyalty, personal sacrifice, and cruelest betrayal. Ever wondered what they would say if the walls could talk? In Scotland, it is said sometimes they do. Phantom hammering in the dark of the night, moans of pain and loneliness emanating from hidden rooms, whispers of secrets around every corner. Duntroon Castle stands on the west coast of Scotland in the region of Argyll. It is a fortress built more than 800 years ago to guard the surrounding countryside against raiders from across the sea. Now a peaceful home, it was once the scene of bitter clan fighting. To this day, Duntroon is said to be haunted by the spirit of a lone piper whose heroic deed and loyalty to his clan brought him to a gruesome end. The sound of Scottish pipes has haunted the castle for many years, summoning memories of Duntroon's brutal past. But it is not only the pipes that seem to haunt Duntroon. Furniture has been seen moving on its own, and objects have been known to hurl themselves at the walls. Clocks stop, and a horrible discovery has been unearthed from beneath the castle stones. To understand the hauntings at Duntroon, we must return to its violent past. In the 1600s, Duntroon was owned by the powerful Campbell clan. The Scots were divided by civil war. The Campbells fought on the side of Parliament, and their mortal enemies, the Macdonalds, supported King Charles I. Hearing that most of the Campbells were away from Duntroon, Carl Quito, a Macdonald chieftain, took advantage of the situation and attacked the castle. When the McDonald's had secured the castle, Quito sailed off to continue his campaign. He left behind a small garrison and his lawyer Piper to guard the castle. The Campbells were determined to retake their castle from the McDonald's. In Quito's absence, they mounted a counterattack. Eventually, the Campbell clan recaptured Duntry. Only one MacDonald was spared, the Piper. As privileged individuals, 
Pipers were protected. Imprisoned and surrounded by enemies, the Piper knew that his master would return to meet an almost certain death. The Piper scanned the horizon for his master's boat, desperate to find a way of warning him. At last, the Piper saw their boat on the horizon, and he did the only thing he could do to warn his master. He began to play his pipes. At first, Kito thought the piper was playing a tune of welcome. But as he came closer, he heard the tune become more urgent. And understanding it was a warning to leave, he turned the boat around and sailed to safety. When the Campbells realized that there had been a message in the piper's tune, they decided upon a punishment they felt would fit the crime. Brutally, they cut off his hands so he could play no more. The piper died from his wounds. Those who thought the story to be merely a local myth were quite shocked when, in about 1880, a chilling discovery was made beneath the castle flagstone. Hey, John, look at this. What do you find, Jamie? Look. Oh, how long that The workmen had found a skull, and when more stones had been removed, much to everyone's amazement, a full skeleton was revealed. Conspicuously missing his hands. At long last, the myth of the Duntroon Piper had been proven. A single standing stone marks the spot where the skeleton is said to have been buried. It is known only as the Piper's grave. But though he is nameless, his courageous act has immortalized him, the Piper of Duntroon, who, perhaps to this day, waits loyally at his post for his clan to return.